Notice that the duck's beak is elongated. The eye sits rather far back on the head. It has a long swan-like neck webbing between the toes. Whereas a chicken has the eye much lower on the head, much shorter beak, no webbing between the toes, yeah. much shorter neck. So when you put the two together with this energy process, you get what they call duck hens. The Koreans were very interested in this, maybe for cooking. You can see the eye is much farther back on the head. The head is shaped much more like a duck than a normal chicken. There was a total of 500 duck eggs, zap, or chicken eggs, that should be, zapped by the experiment. 480 of them actually hatched. 80% of all the hatchlings had a flat, duck-shaped head. 90% had a shift in the position of their eyes. 25% had webbing appear between the toes. This was done by nothing but energy that changed the DNA inside the chicken egg. From so now we ask, what, what exactly happened with a duck-billed platypus? <laughs> you have what clearly appears to be a duck bill, and it lays eggs, but the rest of it is just like a mole with claws on its hands and everything. Now when we go out to Russia again, we find Dr. Peter Garyev, and he showed some very interesting stuff with DNA. You start with eggs that have been laid by a frog. Then you have eggs that were laid by a salamander. You shine a non-burdening laser beam through the salamander eggs, and you take that beam and you shoot it into the frog eggs. And what do you think happened to the frog's eggs? They completely metamorphosized into a salamander, and they showed no evidence of ever having come out of a frog's body. Their children were salamanders, and they never got any genetic problems as they got older, unlike clones. So is this the engine of evolution? When we have witnesses like Henry Deacon and uh, Sergeant Clifford Stone, and they're telling us that there's over 40 or 50 different species of human being in the galaxy that are visiting us, could it be that the galaxy is what's creating life on this planet? Is the human body an intelligent design that is programmed to grow on every planet? I've just given you the scientific proof that shows you how this could happen. Because what we're seeing is that every creature on Earth is changing in these even cycles of 26 million years. Now there's another cycle that was discovered of 62 million years in length. So these are galactic energy fields that is reprogramming our DNA. Do you think that the energy that's doing that is around you in this room right now? And if it was there, how would you notice that it was there? What is the most important quality of this energy? Remember the feelings that it gives you when you, when you have it near you? Remember I said that it gives you a bliss hit? <laughs> it's a positive energy. And that's why when you think positively, positive things happen to you. You can actually rewrite your own DNA and transform your health. And we know that the ancients were building pyramids to harness this energy. And again, these are galactic energy waves causing this to happen to us. So is there any evidence in the human being that can show that our DNA is changing? And the answer is absolutely yes. John Hawkes is a scientist from University of Wisconsin. He studied rapid evolution or positive selection in human beings. It turns out that 5,000 years ago, human beings were a lot more similar to each other than they are now. In the last 5,000 years, evolution is moving 100 times faster. And in fact, over the last 40,000 years, we are in a time of supercharged evolutionary change. This is why I wish Dan Burrish was in the audience right now. Because what he's describing is an explosion of micro wormholes from the galaxy in 2012. And he says that these people that are visiting us are what we look like in the future. <laughs> so what I've just given you is scientific proof that time travelers from our future could look very different than we do. This may not be the final stage of our evolution. And as our DNA becomes more evolved, we also get much stronger psychic ability. And Bill, you were just saying, could we have a microphone? Could you reiterate what you said about that, that witness who... Uh... Good, good. Witness who was talking about um, that the human life form had changed. Oh, that they time travel and that they didn't want us to know our potential. That that, that was the oh, biggest yeah. secret. Yeah, sure. 
I'll say that again because it's a, uh, I think it's a beautiful nugget of information that really gives us all a big clue about what's happening here, that the information was reported by Bill Burns, who had interviewed uh, Admiral George Hoover shortly before his death, and he worked for the Office of Naval Intelligence, who is now dead, but uh, Bill Burns got this testimony for him uh, just a few years before he died. And Burns reported that Hoover had said that the biggest secret was not that the Roswell visitors were time travelers. It was not that this extraordinary technology existed. It was not that we were not alone, but that it was that they were us from the future. And that exactly as you have described in your video interview with us, and as Colonel Philip Corso described in his book, The Day After Roswell, these visitors have mastered how to interface their own consciousness with their high technology to enable them to travel in time and space. And that means that the capacity of their consciousness and therefore the capacity of our consciousness must be considerable. That's a deliberate English understatement. Basically, it means that the powers that be who are trying to keep the lid of this box of expanding consciousness, which is where we all are at right now, they don't want us to know how powerful we are in case we really pick up this ball and run with it. And so the biggest secret in this whole box of puzzle pieces is actually our own potential. And that's a beautiful bridge back to David's work. All right. This is the trippy part. The people 5,000 years ago are more similar to Neanderthals than they are to us now. So this effect is already happening now and can be measured now. And obviously, as Bill just told you, as we keep growing, we will be able to time travel with nothing more than our consciousness. Because and that is the biggest secret of the entire UFO cover-up. Just to prove to you that this is real, this is a copy of the article, one of them, where this was published in mainstream media about 5,000 years different from Neanderthals. Here's another example of it from the BBC. The rate of evolution now is roughly 100 times higher than any other period in human history. And they say this is in contrast with the widely held belief that recent human evolution has stopped. Another proof that we are evolving is in the Flynn effect. This means that the average person's IQ is going up by three points every 10 years. He studied over 20 different countries. This has continued happening every 10 years for over a century. The increase is most striking for tests that measure our ability to re recognize abstract, nonverbal patterns. This means it is not related to people reading more newspapers and magazines. He said this is so stunning that it amounts to a cultural renaissance. We also are finding that over 80 countries, the overall happiness level is increasing in all of these different countries around the world. 45 out of 52 countries showed an increase in happiness. We also see that the difference between people who are unhappy and people who are happy is getting less and less over time. So, is there a possibility that if consciousness on the earth is changing, could there be any way to prove that our consciousness is being changed by the galaxy? This comes from Dr. James Spottiswood. He combined over 20 years of studies into ESP, or what he called anomalous cognition. He picked very scientifically sound studies with ordinary people. This had never been done before. He wanted to see if people were more psychic during a certain time of the day, like high noon. In the normal day, which is called synodic, there was no time where people were more psychic. A synodic day is measured by how the earth is spinning around the sun. He did find an effect in the sidereal day. The sidereal day is how the Earth is rotating relative to the center of the galaxy. So this is an average of 20 years worth of psychic data. This is the time of day in sidereal time down here. And this is how psychic people are over here. <laughs> 